Hi, I'm David Compton. A trucker peels off his roof by hitting the ceiling of the Boston Tunnel, and a train broadsides a tractor trailer. Both of these stories have unique musical twists to them, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jessica Rose. A new court ruling could affect drivers' paychecks. Plus, 5,000 CMVs are sidelined in Brake Safety Week. These are the stories we're covering along with our Rig of the Week on this edition of the Trucker News Channel. A lot of us like to listen to music while we drive, and most of us know those lyrics from the famous Johnny Cash song, I hear that train a coming, it's coming around the bend, and I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Well, the other day in Leon, Mexico, my guess this trucker had Johnny Cash turned up a little bit too loud in the cab, as he obviously didn't hear this train a coming. This guy makes a left-hand turn directly in front of an approaching freight train, and if he would have been just a second slower, the train would have ended up hitting the cab and not the trailer and making this accident much worse. Apparently, there were no injuries. There could be some big changes in the way truck drivers get paid. After a district court judge in Arkansas refused to dismiss a class action lawsuit related to minimum wage pay for commercial vehicle drivers. The suit, which involves around 3,000 truckers, alleges that PAM Transport violated federal labor laws and minimum wage requirements by failing to pay their drivers for the total number of hours worked. The court's ruling upholds the guideline that truck drivers should be paid the federal minimum wage of $7.25 for 16 hours per day, meaning all of the time spent in the truck except for 8 hours of sleep. The ruling also indicates that time spent in the sleeper berth could count as work, even if that time is considered to be off-duty. The case in Arkansas is still ongoing, but the ultimate decision could affect truckers' pay across the rest of the country. We'll be right back after these messages. Joining me today on the show is Lou Nappy, an account manager at Coal City Cobb Company. And for those of you not familiar with the company Coal City Cobb, it's a second generation family owned business that provides liquid bulk transportation services to the chemical and hazardous waste industries. Welcome to the show, Lou. Thank you for having me. So Lou, a lot of our viewers are already driving a van, a reefer, or a flatbed truck. So tell me, why should they consider switching to a chemical tank truck? Well, a chemical tank truck is a specialized piece of equipment, and those who operate them are considered specialists. Specialists command a higher rate per mile and receive compensation if they're delayed loading and offloading. And tank truck drivers are never required to hire lumpers to load and offload, and they do not use tarps and chains. Okay, that sounds logical, but why Coal City Cobb? Well, that's a great question, Dave. As you know, Coal City Cobb is not the only carrier, uh, tank truck carrier looking for drivers, but we are willing to invest in training an experienced over-the-road driver to handle chemical shipments in bulk if he or she possesses a safe, dependable, and professional reputation. And if he or she is an owner-operator, Coal City Cobb will finance the installation of a pump and compressor for his truck interest-free. Applicants are flown to our corporate office training center in Waxahachie, Texas. Hotel, lunch, and training pay is provided until orientation is complete, usually in a week. Additional training is always available at any of our seven terminal locations. And unlike many other bulk carriers, Coal City Cobb does not broker loads. Carriers who do can take loads at a premium and sell them back to their carrier division uh, Coal City Cobb drivers, both company and owner operators, are paid a percentage of what the customer pays us, plus loading and unloading pay. Okay. How, how has Coal City Cobb been able to expand and retain their driver roster? You've done a good job at it. Well, the same way we've been able to properly expand and retain our customer base proper vetting during the application process. Expectations on both sides are clearly understood up front so a solid long-term relationship can be established. All Coal City Cobb terminals are company-owned and operated, working as a team with the support of a strong independent central dispatch. And drivers who convert from van and flatbed companies tend to retire 
uh, hauling uh, tank trucks. <laughs> well, that sounds good. Thanks, Lou. And if you'd like more information on Coal City Cobb Company, you can reach them at the information shown on the screen below. Thanks, Lou. Thank you. When Lionel Richie sang the words, oh, what a feeling when you're dancing on the ceiling, I'm sure he was not referring to being a truck driver. However, that's just what happened the other day in the O'Neill Tunnel in Boston during rush hour. That's when a flatbed carrying a container clipped the roof of the tunnel, sending debris flying everywhere. The debris struck two other vehicles, crippling them also in the tunnel. Transportation officials were forced to shut down the two lanes inside the tunnel to remove the truck and the debris from the crash, resulting in traffic backups on the southbound I-93 for miles, making it no tunnel of love for commuters. Luckily, there were no injuries, and the owner of the rig, Snap Truck, is investigating whether a taller-than-usual container was placed on the rig by mistake. FYI, the maximum vehicle height for the O'Neill Tunnel is listed at 13 feet 6 inches. Enforcement personnel in 57 jurisdictions throughout Canada and the United States conducted over 35,000 inspections on commercial motor vehicles and reported data on brake violations during this year's Brake Safety Week this past September. The majority of vehicles inspected did not have any brake-related out-of-service conditions. Inspectors did find critical inspection items in 14% of the vehicles and placed those vehicles out of service until the conditions could be corrected. The out-of-service percentage was nearly identical to last year. Brake Safety Week is part of CVSA's Operation Air Brake Program in partnership with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration and the Canadian Council of Motor Transport Administrators. We'll be right back after this message. This week's Rig of the Week belongs to Jerry Cruz, owner of Hardly Working, a truck mechanic and road service company out of San Antonio, Texas. Cruz said that when he decided to strip an old Chevy C7500 down to the frame, motor and transmission, and rebuild it into a customized Peterbilt, his intention was to create what he called a full-blooded work truck. But the project became a hobby, and after two years he found he accidentally created a show truck. On the bright side, he said when he does take it out on service runs, Customers take one look and figure, hey, any guy that come out in a truck this flashy must know what he's doing. If you have a rig you'd like to have profiled here on the show, send us a video to rig of the week at the trucker.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to click the little red subscribe button below. You can also go to the trucker.com to read the latest breaking news stories. That's all for this edition. On behalf of David Compton, myself, Jessica Rose, and all of us here at the Trucker News Channel, thanks for watching.